I'm a, I'm here to uh, tell you the story of how I built the uh, MP29 tactile touch calculator. Uh, my name is Michael Park. I, I'm M Park on the, <clears throat> on the HPMuseum.org forum. I live in the upper left corner of the United States. My HP collection, such as it is, consists of an HP 25C and an HP 42S. I'm uh, just a filthy casual. I hadn't paid uh, any attention to HP calculators for many, many years, but I stumbled across the forum a couple of years ago and I've been slowly catching up. I saw how some folks were building their own calculators like Eric, and I got the itch to build one myself. I didn't have a clear goal in mind to start with, Mostly, I just had questions, whether to emulate something that already existed or to roll my own what kind of processor or kind of display. And of course, the biggest question was keys, because I wanted real keys. I didn't want a touch screen. But keys, that's a whole can of worms. And uh, I, I was kind of stuck here. But uh, I had this thought, you know, what if each key had a little display built in? Or wouldn't that solve many of my problems? There'd be no need for printed legends. Each key could dynamically indicate its current function. The more I thought about it, the more uh, excited I got about this dynamic keys idea. But does such a magical device exist? Uh, it turns out there is such a thing as a display switch. There's even, uh, there's even out there a, uh, a whole computer keyboard with OLED displays in each key. But uh, the current technology is a bit too big and it's way too expensive for my purposes. Uh, maybe in the future, they'll come down in size and price and I'll be able to build my dream calculator with them. But for the present, I needed some other way to explore this uh, dynamic calculator key idea. So I had to uh, had to basically come crawling back to touch screens. You know, I had originally dismissed them, but uh, now I had to reconsider because they were the only way I could think of to implement dynamic keys, <clears throat> even if the keys weren't real. But of course, touch screens have the huge drawback of lacking tactile feedback. The experience of tapping on a piece of glass is quite unsatisfying, uh, especially after you've been spoiled by HP's legendary keys. So uh, in an effort to solve that problem, I tried mounting a touch screen on top of a tactile switch. And after a few iterations, this happened. It's hard to tell from the video, but in real life, when you press on it, you actually feel the key travel and you get a gentle click at the end, just like a real good calculator key. It's, uh, you know, it's maybe not Hewlett Packard quality, but it actually feels pretty darn good. And there's a little more to it than just putting a button under the, under the screen, but we'll get into that later. Mm -hmm. uh, but having convinced myself that a tactile touch screen was workable, I had to decide what calculator to build around it. I decided to model my calculator after the HP 29C, seen here in a photo from hpmuseum.org. Uh, the 29C is similar to my 25C, but different enough, different enough to be interesting. I wasn't interested in making a clone because I wanted the freedom to experiment but I did hope to build something that would capture the spirit of the 29C. Software is all custom except for libraries, of course. In particular, I'm using GCC's double precision library <clears throat> for the math, because I'm not really a numbers guy. <clears throat> Physically, the uh, MP29 is a bit larger and blockier than my 25C, but I think it has some of the Woodstock character. Um, as you, as you uh, can see, or maybe remember, the, uh, the, uh, 
Almost every key serves three functions, indicated by colored legends on the faceplate and on two faces of each key. And the colored F and G keys select the correspondingly colored functions. The MT29 does things a little differently. Uh, here you can see that when I press the gold and blue shift keys, each key updates to show its shifted function. So let's press the uh, gold key. You see all the keys now show their gold functions. Blue key, blue functions. And now we return to the unshifted state. I, uh, I mentioned that I wanted to experiment with different ideas on this calculator. Well, I had read Richard Nelson's paper on what he called entry RPN. <clears throat> and I thought I'd try implementing it on my calculator. Entry RPN, or as I like to call it, RP entry, may be a good thing, maybe not. I don't really have a strong opinion one way or the other. What interested me was that it changes the effect of the enter key. Ordinarily, enter duplicates the X register, but in entry RPN, when a number is being typed in, enter terminates the input without duplicating it. This to me was a perfect opportunity for the enter key to dynamically indicate its different functions to, to prevent confusion. So here, when I start input, inputting a number, note that the enter key changes into the end key to signify that it will terminate digit entry. I also added a backspace key to correct wrong numbers. So here we hit end. Now 12.3 is in the X register. We do a swap, we'll see that it has not been duplicated into the Y register. But if we hit the actual enter key, now 12.3 is in both X and Y. And, and of course, if you enter a number and are going to use it immediately, you don't have to push end. You can just go ahead and press the plus button. I also added an exit key, exit key to cancel out of number entry. <clears throat> At this point, uh, I was pretty pleased actually with how well this tactile dynamic touch screen was working, but there was room for improvement. <clears throat> uh, the touch screen gives welcome tactile feedback when you press it, but being a flat sheet, it does not provide any help in locating the keys. So you really have to watch where you're pressing. I figured that a physical keyboard would help, so I built one. Mm. Here I'm installing it. Keys are transparent. They're hinged. And uh, in combination with the touch touch screen's tactile feedback, they become a reasonable facsimile of classic HP rotate and click key, but each key is also a little display. It's the poor man's display switches. So now I felt that the HP 20, sorry, I now I felt that the MP29 was a real calculator. So let's put it through some of its paces. Give you a little calculation here. Get the square root of two by using shift key to get the square root function. Classic. Let's raise this to the sixth power. Y to the X. It's actually Doing some number crunching, doing some multiplication. And hopefully you remember this famous mathematical constant from uh, your youth. And also do the forensic test, forensics test here. We'll start with the number nine and then we'll apply three trig functions to it. And then three inverse trig functions to undo them.
And with any luck, we should come back with nine. And if we extend the display precision to nine decimal places, we see that it is that exactly nine. Uh, but if we extend to 10 places, uh, not quite. So pretty close. The MP29 has, uh, has 100 memory registers. So the HP 29C has 30 memory registers and a convoluted system of addressing them. But the MP29 registers are numbered simply 0 through 99. And any register can be used for indirection. All this memory calisthenics here. We'll put 100 into register number 5. And 123 into register 99. It's just some simple storage stuff that uh, mostly I wanted to demonstrate the, the multi-key command editing and display. It's slowly. Mm -hmm. There's an HP42 influence there. So we call five. We subtracted one from it, so it's now 99. And here we're going to do uh, so here we we want to add that into a multiple, multiply, and we're going to use indirection. And here we can specify which register we want to indirect through. So we're multiplying 10 into the register specified by register 5. Register 5 is 99. So we just multiply 10 into register 99, which started out as 1, 2, 3, and is now 1, 2, 3, 0. <clears throat> Um, the MP29 is, of course, programmable. Program memory is 100 steps, and there are 100 labels. And programs can be saved in non-volatile memory. Um, hang on. So you'll see, you'll notice that there's an extra key here in the top row. The HP29C has two slide switches. Uh, as Eric mentioned, power switch and a program run switch. Uh, for the MP29, I eliminated the slide switches and snuck in this extra key. So we'll switch to program mode. We're going to write a little Fibonacci sequence program. Start with a label. Let's choose 12 arbitrarily. We assume the, the two numbers in the sequence are on the stack. We'll add them together, the last x, and swap them, swap them around to get them in the right state. Pause to show the new number in the sequence, and then loop back to the beginning of the program. We load up the stack with 0 and 1, the first two numbers in the sequence, and go to we execute starting at label 12, and we see the Fibonacci sequence in the display. 589. You can interrupt the program and a uh, single step through it. First, we'll examine the stack. There's a 55 and an 89. Single step. We're at the go to 12. We add 55 and 89, bring back the 89, swap them, and then we pause to show it, 144, the new number in sequence. The stack is ready for the next iteration. Uh, nothing to it. And now I will load in a previously stored program. 
They're all numbered from zero up to some number. I forget. There's, I think there's room for 70 some. We'll just start with program zero. It's a factorial program. Every factorial is 5,040. And then 69 factorial. That uh, extra switch also serves as the off button. Just puts it into a, a sleep mode, wake it up by hitting any key, and it picks up where it left off. And now I'll talk briefly about the MP29's internals. <clears throat> Electronics wise, it's very straightforward. There's the touch screen, of course, and uh, it's display a uh, driver board. Uh, there's one mechanical switch and a piezo speaker. Uh, the brains are two parallax propeller microcontrollers. One is full of GCC floating point code and acts as an FPU for the other, which handles everything else. Uh, the propeller uh, is a very interesting microcontroller, by the way. A unique architecture and super fun to play with. Definitely check it out. <clears throat> I promised earlier to discuss the tactile touchscreen mechanism. Uh, the touchscreen does not simply rest on the switch. If you're familiar with the little scissoring mechanism in some computer keyboards, as illustrated here, you will recognize what I built. So, there are the scissors. And the touchscreen is attached to this plate which hooks onto the scissors. And then the mechanism keeps the screen level so that no matter where it's pressed, it activates the button that's underneath it. Hope that makes sense. So, um, of course, this, this whole tactile touchscreen uh, idea is just a stopgap until small and inexpensive display switches become available, which they might or might not ever become. Uh, until then, it may be worth putting in a little more work. I'd like to find a stiffer material for my scissors. Uh, the, the, one of the one I'm using right now is 3D printed in PLA, and it's a little bit, a little bit bendy. So uh, when you press on the screen, near the center, you get a, you get a nice clicky feed, get nice clicky feedback, but the farther out, away you press, the mushier it gets because of that flexing. I'm also experimenting with different mechanisms. Um, and I also want to do some experiments in uh, using this dynamic key idea with something closer to the 42S. And I don't know what, I think we have time for a quick demo. So let's switch over to that. But before we go there, let me just quickly, uh, da, 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 da. Let's press the right button here. Uh, give a quick shout out to my, my very patient wife who uh, gave this project its code name, Calculon. Uh, thanks also to HPCC for putting on this conference and the HPMuseum.org forum community. All right, let's see. So I have to stop sharing. Oops. Stop sharing. Turn on my video. Can you see? Yeah, um, that's good. All right. So, all right, here we go. So this is, and each one, how do I make this a little bigger for myself? Uh, speaker? Speaker. Oh, well, I'll, I guess I, as long as you can see it, it doesn't matter if I can see it. I have a very small view of myself, but. I guess I could just look at my hand. Um, 
Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. So anyway, this is the MP29 in all its 3D printed glory. Uh, I'm not a 3D printing design expert, so it's all you know, sharp corners and flat planes, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a handful, but it, it can be held in the hand. Let's see, it actually does turn on. You see, you can see the display. I know that's hard to get the keys on video, but hopefully you can see what's going on. A little shift. And shift. Back here. Um, what I really wanted to show here was Plugging in the programming cable, I want to run a little demo program here. Okay, so this this doesn't do anything except uh, the keys are sort of alive. Um, I'm, I'm experimenting with something like a 42 uh, layout, except uh, within the confines of my MP29 keyboard because I'm too lazy to build a new keyboard at the moment. But uh, I'm thinking about uh, putting frequently used functions up in the top row, much like the 42's soft keys. I can have a sort of a little arrow keys to scroll through them. And then uh, I'm thinking you can have, much like the uh, 42's application menus, you know, choose what you're going to be, what kind of work you're, you'll be doing. Maybe you're doing statistics, and then the top row turns into that's keys. Or maybe you're doing some work in different bases, hex, decimal, octal. And you, you have a, uh, you also have the ability to put in those upper hex digits now with the, with the keyboard. And, uh, you know, eventually maybe there will be an alpha mode, so you can have the, uh, letters here, uppercase letters and lowercase letters, and symbols, something like that. Ideally, I want to make, I want to find a way to make the entire layout uh, user customizable. Uh, so, so that uh, it will bring an end to all those religious wars about which side the uh, arithmetic, arithmetic ops should be on. Anyway, I uh, think that's about all I have. Thank you for your attention. I'm happy to entertain any questions, except maybe the question why, because there's no good answer for that. Michael, thank you. That was excellent. Uh, there's, there's been a, a lot of chat on this. Um, on both the WebEx chat and, and the YouTube chat. So um, a lot of interest. Anybody got any questions that they'd like to ask Michael? When you were designing the keyboard appearance, did you consider putting all the functions on display or is there not enough resolution? How can you remember whether you're using the F key or the G key? Well, um, oops, uh, the, the keys themselves, when you when you put the when you when you hit the yellow you hit the gold shift, the keys display their their function in gold. So that that's one hopefully helpful reminder. Um, so I don't know if you can see this, but uh, here I hit the gold key and now. Fixed and Psi and Eng are all in gold. And if I hit the blue key, I see the blue functions. But it, actually, it's a it's an open question. Uh, I was wondering myself actually if they have, uh, because there's a sort of discoverability issue. If you know on a on a on a regular calculator, you see everything laid out at once, even though it may be a little bit overwhelming. Uh, in, in with this, you have to you know you have to have, actually choose. Uh, a particular shift to see what's available. And, you know, in my case, since I was intimately familiar with the 25, which is close enough to the 29, 
you know, I didn't have a problem. But uh, you know, maybe maybe it is a, a case that, that printed labels are actually an advantage. But then you see some new calculators with three or four shifts, you know, multiple functions on on a key and the the keyboard and faceplate become an unreadable mess, in my opinion, mm -hmm. sometimes. So I think there may be a trade off somewhere in there. But my interest was in just having the keys display their dynamic uh, state. I have a quick question, if you can hear me. I can hear you, but I don't know who it is. This is Eric Hazen. Uh, oh, hi, Eric. Presenter. This is brilliant, by the way. It's it's uh, quite a complimentary approach to what I did. Honestly, OLED screens the size of Cherry MX keycaps, I think, in heaven, but they're expensive. And, yeah. Um, I had a specific question. Uh, the code that's running in here, is it some version of HP microcode, or is it a re-implementation in some other language? No, oh, it's 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 totally it, yeah no it, it's totally my own code, uh, completely. Um, what, what's the word? Freestyled. I yeah. didn't have a, an actual architecture or anything in mind. I just sort of I, I had the twenty HP twenty nine C as my guide, but I just threw things together in you know trying to aim in that general general direction. Um, but there was no no plan, no no real design, and it's all it's all my own code from the ground up. I was suspicious of that because your um, the the little trig function test you did gave a much more accurate result than any of the HPs that I have at hand here. <laughs> so I, they're they're good and bad aspects. I mean, I think as a calculator, you get a better calculator if you do what you did and reimplement the code for sure. Um, and then some of us use the old HP code just on general principles. But uh, anyway, brilliant design. Right. I like it a lot. Thank you. Yeah, I did not did not do any of the math myself. I just used GCC's double precision libraries. So. Yeah, you'll get much better results than HP did 40 years ago doing that. <laughs> yep. I have a quick question. You mentioned that there is a speaker chip inside the M29. Is there any plans to implement sound or beeps into the calculator software in the future? Yes. Uh, well, actually, well, right now there is a beep on wake. I don't know if you can hear that, but there was a little beep when it woke up there. And it does beep when you when you make a, an error. Like if you are you're in the middle of storing something and you push uh, let's see, an illegal button, you get a beep. Nice. Mm -hmm. And, you know, eventually, if I go more towards the 42, which has tone instructions, I might end up having actual different, different frequencies and things. Oops. I guess I can't uh, get out of this. My, my apologies if you said this earlier. Uh, it is a great design. I love it. Uh, what's the uh, kind of battery life do you get out of this? <laughs> okay, well, I, I kind of deliberately skirted around this problem. But uh, yeah, the, the processor I chose, the, the propeller processor, is not, doesn't, have, doesn't have an extremely low power mode. Uh, I thought I could get the, I thought I could, you know, slow the clock down and, and you know, get it into a relatively low power state. And, uh, and, 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 and I have a, a hefty, hefty LiPo battery in here. I think it's 2000 milliamp hours. So I was expecting that it would stay on, uh, well, let me, let me, let me just back up a little bit when it's on. The screen at full brightness, it draws about 250 milliamps. So if if the battery pack is 2,000 milliamps, and you get it, it should run continuously most of the day. Uh, when it's in a in a low power state, it draws at least I, I I thought it would draw about nine milliamps when it was sleeping, 
which is not great, but you know, uh, it's 2,000 milliamp hours. You'd think it would stay sleeping for you know, a week at least, but it turns out for some reason uh, it doesn't sleep. I mean, uh, you know, when it's sleeping, it, it exhausts the battery after two or three days for some reason. I'm not sure if, if my uh, my calculations are incorrect or if there's something wrong with the battery or with the, the battery there's a there's a power there's a voltage converter port in there that's actually providing that type of light there uh that i did not maybe properly account for um but it has a usb charging port so i just charge it every other day no i think that's great Step right up. Uh, if there are any more questions? Fabulous. Thank you, Michael. Any any more questions before we move on? Uh, 